First, there was nothing. Before anything could come about, you need a place. Space was formed. So to speak, some time after that, energy was released. It is debatable, but I would say that that was when time began. The density of energy was too high for solid objects, if you can call them that, to form. The first objects that formed were the elementary particles that could bond to form protons, neutrons, and electrons, or at least that is our current level of knowledge about these things. When the first protons were made, that's the point at which chemistry started. Before that, it was the turmoil of pure physics at work. Although I referred to chemistry having come about, it was in its absolute infancy, as the particles that formed were only able to become hydrogen. The chaos all about would not allow for this hydrogen to do anything, not that it could have anyway. No matter how you combine hydrogen with itself, nothing tangible can happen, except if it was done at the atomic level. I'll get back to that later, as that was impossible until all the stirring that the energy was causing was overcome by the unrelenting force of gravity. That is one of the four physical binding forces of the void that we live in. That, in essence, is how we came about. The four binding forces are the strong force that holds the components that make the building blocks of atoms possible. The second force is the pull of gravity that all matter inherently possesses except for electromagnetic energy, although gravity has an effect on those particles of quantum. It's almost a contradiction as quanta are supposed to have no gravitational pull, and yet they possess mass. The third, as hard to comprehend force, is magnetism that has many unusual properties. Then there is chemistry, where valence is coming to play. These are probably the most well understood, although due to the near infinite permutations that are possible, we really are at the mercy of absolute chance. Or are we? We could only come about with stability, and that was the state and that was the state of the contents of the universe relatively, isn't it all relative, soon after the universe unfolded. One can only say that, that after a significant amount of time, it was inevitable, inevitable to have intelligence emerge from the near infinite zone we do dwell in. And here we are, on a tiny speck, ready to leap into the darkness all around us. Currently we are just beginning to harness a new form of slave labor and it's taking its toll on the masses. People everywhere are suffering because of this. Social unrest is all around us. The power of it will become greater and greater and poverty will become the normal state of the public at large. There are only two sources of energy here on our planet and in the universe. The Earth is bathed in energy from the Sun. The Sun's energy is released from protons being pressed together until they come into contact with each other, bond to each other, and energy is released. This process is known as fusion. Gravity is behind this being possible. On Earth, there is also geothermal energy available. This is also, in a roundabout way, caused by gravity. All the material that pulled together to become the Earth by the force of gravity did so at greater and greater velocity. Material colliding heats up when it comes to a halt. As the Earth increased in size, the interior, still having residual heat from falling in, was able to keep a high temperature as the upper layers became a coat, keeping that heat from escaping. However, the heat that is still there is actually based on three sources. The other two are radioactive material that is decaying, and that heat is trapped for a period of time, as well as high pressure caused by gravitational pull. Energy doesn't care about anyone or anything. It has a way that it operates. We have figured out many, many, many ways of controlling it to do things for us. We are absolutely at the point where we can even create objects that completely imitate ourselves in every way. They could replace us, and they are. If you are currently one of the people that are suffering, it most certainly is because we, we are too successful at having created an army of artificial slave labor. All these slaves need are energy to be appeased, that and maintenance. You are no longer necessary. However, don't be a Luddite. All the governments of the world have to wake up now and recognize that if a person isn't working, they can't pay taxes. There are no two ways about it. The machines do the work, the average Joe sits at home watching football until he can't afford to do that either. I mean, look at global debt. Think about it. Which country has ever paid it back? 
Why worry about it all then? Why worry about it? And expect still more to be heaped up on it as more and more people don't work anymore. In the future, even 10-year-olds know that robots will be doing all of our work for us. Don't you ever ask how the economy works then, knowing this yourself? I want to talk about these issues and more broad science topics in my show. I am an inventor and will tell you about some of my ideas. My desire is to see the future happen today and I know how it can be done. Yet people that don't have any idea what to do next are in all kinds of positions that control our destiny. The only tomorrow they see is the one that th that's there for them and none other. We are not the only intelligent species here in the universe, but we might be one of the few that are responsible for our own demise. Do you want to help establish ourselves as a space race, or one that crumbles to pieces like a sandcastle when we've just begun to, when we've just begun to touch the sky? If you're content with saying money is a barrier, then all hope is lost. If you want to know more and do more and see what science and technology are about to allow us to do next, you should try and catch my show on thrivinglive1.tv. There are many more things to know about how we'll make things better than they are now. Things aren't working very good at the moment for most people, but they can be. I'm an inventor and problems are of great concern to me. Things like famine, drought, species extinction, deforestation, desertification, pollution, global warming are mysteries to me because they are all easily repa repairable calamities. Some say all we need to do is discover how to control nuclear fusion for us to succeed. Well, that's not going to help us because we already have that. I call it the sun. I know how all except for species extinction can be dealt with which leads me to my show's declaration of, I don't understand. 